Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Lori Zook. My guests today are from the Girl Scouts organization. With me, I have Dawn Rays and Martha Barilla. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Can you each tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the Girl Scouts? Well, actually, I was a Girl Scout in this very town many years ago, and um, I had an astounding leader that just made an impression. So when I had my own daughter and I dove in head first, became a leader, and now I'm a service unit manager for Jefferson South. Wow, that's terrific. Congratulations. Thank you. That sounds great. And Martha, how about yourself? Well, I was actually a Girl Scout as a child in upstate New York and was involved in scouting for many years and had wonderful experiences as a scout. Uh, I guess about eight or nine years ago, I started to get involved in the Morris Area Girl Scout Council. I'm a resident of Morris County and I was asked to join the, the Board of Directors for the Morris Area Girl Scout Council. So I've been involved in various capacities with, with the Council for about eight or nine years. And I also have two daughters, each of whom either have been or currently are a Girl Scout in the Morris Area Council. That's terrific. I was a Girl Scout myself growing up, so I can relate. Um, I know that Girl Scouts are really active in the community and that you've implemented a lot of programs, of, you know, giving back to the town and so forth. Can you tell me about some of the community service projects that you've done? Well, um, right now there's, there, there's always a lot of activity around the Girl Scouts and the leaders, because they are the volunteers that they are, um, always keep them very busy. Um, some of the service projects is a big part of what they do with um, donating food. They'll do food drives at A&P, &A &P, um, donate that to the local food pantry. Um, they do little things like making little favors for the seniors so that they can have during their senior meals and you know they have their little gatherings and whatnot keep that social environment for them um, they'll decorate the library as well and it's a key point about Girl Scouts because it keeps them part of the community and it you know lets them be aware of their surroundings okay excellent um, Girl Scouting it's evolved over the years and I know that Girl Scouts are presented with a lot of new opportunities. What are the Girl Scouts up to now? Well, um, like you said, like I said before, they're they're always, you know, active. Um, some of our big events that we have a huge turnout for are annual events. We do mother daughter teas, we do father daughter square dances where you have to have them in different sessions because there's such a great turnout. Um, we also start, um, we also have a, an encampment every year with all the Girl Scouts that we go to Camp Majeska. And the turnout has been so profound that we're even thinking about having to divide the Girl Scout trips, the camping trips, wow. by age levels because there are so many turnouts, you know, and maybe even getting the little ones in involved a little more. Why do you think the Girl Scouts is thriving? What, what's making it so successful in Jefferson? The success is really the community and the, the volunteers. We couldn't do it without the volunteers. Um, Jefferson really supports Girl Scouts or scouting in general, boys and girls. And um, they do that by their commitment and they're trying to make sure that the, the scouts um, keep excited about, you know, they're excited about it and they're motivated about be, being scouts. Um, right now, we are finding that there's a lot more of the scouts that are staying in scouting through their older years, which is usually hard to keep them in because of everything else that's happening throughout their lives. Um, since 1999, we've had 19 girls receive a gold award, and the gold award is the highest level of awards that they can receive in Girl Scouting, and that's pretty, you know, it's pretty good. Um, we currently, in Jefferson, we currently have 650 girls registered. Wow. With those 650 girls, there's 475 registered adults. 
So there's that volunteer right there, direct connected to the girls. And all of those girls and adults make up 85 troops. That's fantastic. That's a tremendous amount of people. Can you tell me, what are the different levels of Girl Scouts? How young can they start? How does it work, you know, age-wise? Well, they um, start from kindergarten, which is very different. Last few years, they have um, daisies. And it just gets them used to the social, you know, kind of a little bit being away from mom and dad and everything and getting into the social play. And they do crafts and things like that. Um, after which, they become brownies. And they're that for a few years. Um, from brownies, they go to juniors. And I always mess the other levels up. It's senior and cadets. I always mess up the which way they go. Okay. Um, is it cadets? It's cadets are cadets are after juniors, and then our senior Girl Scouts are our oldest Girl Scouts. So you can stay in in scouting as a as a youth or as a girl up up through age 18, and then uh, continue on as an adult Girl Scout. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. As a volunteer. I never even so. realized that you could do that. That's fantastic. Yep. Yes, in fact, um, you know, both Dawn and I would be adult members of Girl Scouting. Wow. Okay. We're adult Girl Scouts. <laughs> it's interesting. I also remember when I was a Girl Scout, uh, when I was a brownie, at least I remember having, we wore the brown uniforms and we earned all the pins. And now, can you tell me, I see that it's changed as far as what they, what they wear? Yeah. We used to have, I remember having the little brown beanie and the orange tie, stripes, the whole thing. And now they have really simple uniforms. Really their uniform could be something of a sash or a vest. Um, they may wear certain colors, there's khakis or blues, um, and they can get a lot of those uniforms, you know, right through council. But um, they've geared the uniform to match the girls, and now they're more modern and just makes the girls feel, feel more comfortable and maybe not stand out so much as the old uniforms really kind of Good. put you out there. <laughs> right, I remember that. <laughs> That's funny. I, I think the Girl Scouting movement really has worked hard uh, in recent years to, to be more contemporary, yes. uh, to meet the needs of girls and keep girls interested because they do do so many wonderful things with girls in terms of community service and giving them opportunities to develop leadership skills. And, you know, the uniform is a part of that, making girls feel comfortable, making the uniform be something that they're proud of, right. as they should be. And, and also fits their lifestyle and the activities that they're engaging in, which certainly has changed over the years as well in scouting. Right, exactly. What steps have you taken to keep the girls involved and excited about participating in Girl Scouts? On Jefferson side, what we've been trying to do, um, Jefferson is two units. We have a Jefferson South and a Jefferson North because we're so big, and we've got Big Weldon Road all in between it. Right. So um, what we've been doing in the past few years is really trying to build a bridge between both sections. Through elementary school, um, Jefferson North is on the Milton side of Jefferson and they go to a different elementary school system and then Jefferson South on the Lake Opacon side goes through a different um, school system. But once they hit middle school, they're together and other than maybe some sports that they may interact with, they don't know each other at all. So they wouldn't be able to really mingle that way. Okay. Um, so. We're trying to do things such as um, we did a seed ball project, and that was to beautify forgotten places. And we actually did it in Camp Jefferson, where we tried to do it around the lake. Um, they had a ball doing that. The older girls got involved by te learning how to make the seed balls and then teaching the younger ones how to do it and getting all dirty and whatnot. <laughs> And then we got together and we did both sides and we did the disbursement where you actually throw the seed balls out. Um, we start every year with a campfire at Camp Jefferson and the, the older girls lead in songs and you know the younger ones are like very attentive to the older ones. They want to be the older ones. And the older ones like it because they feel that somebody's looking up to them. You know, and, and girls like that. You know, I think everybody does. Right. So we do that, and we have the the marshmallow uh, toasting and s'mores, and can't have a campfire without s'mores. <laughs> so, and then at the end we do a jamboree. So we always get a great turnout with them. Correct. I think our adult volunteers in Jefferson deserve an awful lot of credit for uh, developing these these activities that can be done together between the two service units, the Jefferson North and Jefferson South, because it is a good, you know, a good way to develop leadership and to develop community between 
two different sections of Jefferson Township that really have not had a lot of involvement, but will as these girls go into you know go into um, higher levels of schooling and will come together. So it's a wonderful opportunity that they've created for these girls to meet and work alongside each other outside of being you know thrown together uh, right. when they start going to a combined school district. It's it's just a great thing that they've done here, our adult volunteers. That's, it sounds like it. And, and Je Girl Scouts have been around for about 80 years, so something must be right in order for it to just keep getting bigger and better. Yes, this council has been around for about 80 years, and, and Girl Scouting uh, slightly longer than that. So we have a, a very long and proud history in the Morris area. And I understand there's a program for the older girls we were talking before. Is that the cadets? That would be cadets and seniors. You're probably thinking of a, about our, our Studio 2B program. Yes. And Studio 2B is, is a program initiative that has been developed by our national organization and has been rolled out in Morris Area Girl Scout Council over the last couple of years. It's a different way for girls to access programming that's contemporary and meets their needs. Girls can access 2B, Studio 2B program either as part of their troop or individually. Uh, a girl can have an interest in and enroll in a Studio 2B program. And it's, uh, it, it covers a, a wide array of activities. We have programs that are focused on leadership, on learning about government, uh, science, technology. So it's, it's much more than the traditional camping and environment, which also generates an awful lot of interest and is good. But it gives girls more choices and more ways, different ways to access and take advantage of programs for young women. Terrific. So. It's a lot more modern than what I remember. Yes. Well, we'll be back in just a moment to talk about Jockey Hollow. <laughs> Help keep the light shining and the heritage alive. Support the National Lighthouse Museum as a member, a donor, or a corporate sponsor. Community Television, where we'll be talking about Jockey Hollow and the Girl Scouts. Welcome back, ladies. Thank you. Maybe you can tell me a bit about um, Jockey Hollow and the Girl Scouts. How are they connected? Well, uh, the Morris Area Girl Scout Council owns and operates a camp out at Jockey Hollow. It's uh, just across the way. It's in Mendham, Mendham Township, and part of our land is also in, in Harding Township. We have about 212 acres out there. Uh, we've had that camp operating for about 70 years now. It's a beautiful, beautiful location. It's just across the, the road from the Morristown National Historical Park. And we've uh, been running camps and also some outdoor program activities for many, many years there. Okay. Can you tell me, I know that you're going to do some type of improvements there? Is yes. That we actually plans? have a, a major improvement project underway. We're partway through the project. Uh, we're spending about $4 million out there. That camp, although we have had it for many years, has not had any sort of significant upgrade in, I would say, about 30 years, Lori. So it's been some time, and it's really a treasure, but it's, it's one we feel strongly we need to, um, you know, make more, uh, make more use of and, and uh, keep up and be able to develop so that more girls in the Morris area can take advantage of its natural beauty and its offerings out there. In, uh, in phase one of our project, which is completed, we, we did uh, probably the not so pretty things. Things like uh, expanding and regrading the access road, which if, if you've been out there at all, and I know uh, perhaps, I know <laughs> Dawn has been uh -huh. out there. Very and, small uh, access. It, it's, it's very difficult to get up and down. And of course, since we do run a summer day camp, we also have buses going up and down. So we've, we've expanded and regraded that. We also expanded the parking lot out there including some handicap spots and um, made more parking available for pickups and drop-offs and also to, to move our buses around a little bit better in the summer. And then okay. the third thing is the pretty thing we did out there in phase one, and that is we built a new Olympic-sized swimming pool. 
In fact, I think you'll be showing your audience some pictures of that pool later. Uh, those pictures were taken last summer. We completed the pool in time so that some of our summer day campers were able to enjoy that pool last summer. And you'll see in the picture a bulldozer in the background. Uh, <laughs> we were anxious to, to get it done so that we could have some of our girls enjoy it. And the pool is really lovely. It also offers expanded opportunity for, for swimming instruction and also life-saving instruction, which is a great thing to offer our girls out there. What are some of the things that you offer at the camp? And if maybe you can explain a little bit in detail. Is it a day camp? Is it a sleepover camp? Which Girl Scouts get to use it? Is it just New Jersey? Uh, because we, we, well, we've had tremendous demand for our summer day camp. It's a summer day camp program. Uh, we've, in the past, been able to offer that program to only about 200 girls during the summer because of the facilities that we had. But with the work that we're doing, we'll be able to, to accommodate close to 300 girls or about 300 girls for a summer day camp. Um, the big thing, though, is that with the other renovations that we're doing, we'll be able to offer year-round outdoor programming. We have tremendous programs out there for the girls that are environmental in nature. We offer bird watching. We, we offer stream exploration. Uh, maple sugaring. So there are many different types of environmental and outdoor programs and more girls will be able to go out there and take advantage of them. In the past we've offered limited overnight camping on weekends other than in the summer for some of our troops who really wanted to rough it because <laughs> it was very rough out there and with phase two of our project we're, we're building a troop house and we're also building six cabins. They will be rustic but they will be heated and there will be small kitchens so that the girls can go out and have an overnight or a weekend and, and fix food, fix their own food, do their own cooking out there, so that you know more girls will be able to have weekend camping uh, opportunities. Our, our other camp property, uh, I believe Dawn mentioned Camp Majiska, is in Glens Bay, New York, and this will be really a great opportunity for people who in the past would have made the trip to Majiska can now go for a quick overnight and uh, in enjoy Jockey Hollow. Great. Is Jockey Hollow open at all to the public or is it strictly just open to the Girl Scouts? Uh, at this point it's just open to the Girl, Girl Scouts. Scouts. Yeah, it's, we want to make sure that we maintain its rustic nature. Um, we're very conscious of being environmentally friendly out there so that you know there are certainly limitations on the amount of people we can we can have out there using the facility so that its, it's uh, natural environment is not destroyed. Right, and you, you know, began construction safe. pretty much because the, the facilities needed to be upgraded? Oh, absolutely. They absolutely needed to be upgraded. Uh, along with the cabins that and the troop house that we're building in phase two, and that's currently underway, we're also building an activity field. We're putting in a shower house to go along with our, our new pool. And, uh, you know, we're also, in, I guess the biggest thing, and all, all the young ladies in Jefferson would like to hear this, <laughs> is that we're finally doing away with our latrines out there, Lori, <laughs> and we're putting in environmentally friendly composting toilets. Oh, so great. that will That's be right. a, a, a more quite experience. a welcome <laughs> for all of our campers and, and our weekend visitors that are going out there for Girl Scout program. That's terrific. That's yeah. much better. Tell me about some of the benefits of the camp. Well, as I said, the camp is environmentally friendly. It will offer many more girls in the Morris Area Council the opportunity to get out there and enjoy its, its beauty. Um, it offers an opportunity for leadership, for forming friends for the girls that go out there and engage in program. And it it's also offers, offers an awful lot of learning about our environment. It's, it's a beautiful property. Uh, you, I think you'll also see some pictures of some of the girls enjoying the camp and enjoying uh, streaming. There's, I believe we have a shot of a girl enjoying one of the stream explorations. Okay. Um, and you'll see that we're also just making it more accessible, handicap accessible as well by building some natural walkways so that uh, all girls can enjoy the property. Terrific. How can the community help you? Well, there are many ways we can help. As, a, as I said, it's a, a major undertaking and four million dollars is a, a pretty hefty goal and, and we are underway with that. But any, everybody can help in some way. Uh, one of the programs that we've initiated that involves the whole community is a recycling program. And I know that our girls in Jefferson Township are also participating in that. If you have used cell phones, if you have um, 
uh, ink Inkjet. inkjet cartridges or laser printer cartridges, the Girl Scouts would love to have them and they'll be uh, able to turn them in. They will re you know, recycle those and, and uh, raise anywhere between a dollar and a dollar thirty per phone or per, per cartridge. So that's a way that our girls are helping to rally the community to raise money for us uh, to help with this program. We also have uh, a significant event coming up in May. It'll be our sixth annual 1,000 Woman Hike. Wow. Um, we've done this for a number of years, and the concept of the hike is to really rally women, although men are also invited and do attend. <laughs> it's to really rally adult women to support the Girl Scouting movement. Uh, you, can, you can join the hike by visiting our website, which is www.magsc.org and you can enroll online. You may join as part of a team or you may join on your own and come as an individual. There's a, a, a $25 uh, participation fee and donation to the camp project associated with the hike and you can come and walk through. We step off from the grounds of Villa Walsh on May 21st about 9.45 in the morning Okay. And we actually walk through the Morristown National Historical Park and we'll end up at, at camp so that everybody who participates can see some of the changes that we've made out there and that are currently underway. Terrific. So that's another event. And I wanted to ask you, I have one of these lovely bracelets from the Girl Scouts. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about Absolutely. how this works. Absolutely. These are bracelets that, that are an initiative of the Morris Area Girl Scout Council. This is part of our alumni campaign. We're actually trying to reach out to any women in Morris, in the Morris County area who at one time may have been a Girl Scout. We'd like to hear from them. We'd like to start to communicate with them and have them uh, share their experiences as a Girl Scout and the benefits they received from it, their opportunities for volunteer or really just to network. And so this is our alumni campaign. Uh, you may visit our website and when you do, you will also see if you register as an alumni, you also have the opportunity, uh, whether an alumni or a friend, I should say, to uh, receive one of these wristbands. I, I hope we can get it. It says Promise Kept yep. on it, which is reference to the Girl Scout Promise. And it's to identify with the values of the Girl Scouting movement. Uh, these are available on our website, and there's a $5 donation requested to receive one of our Promise Kept wristbands. Excellent. So. Thank, thank you. And is there a phone number if somebody watching wants to find out more? Is there a local number that they can call? Yes. They could call our, our council office, which is located in Randolph, New Jersey. The phone number is 973-927-7722. Terrific. Well, thank you ladies both for being with me today. It was uh, terrific. And we're going to be meeting with a Girl Scout in just a moment. So stay tuned for Jefferson Highlights Community Television. What's my game plan? To use what I was born with. Which is why I don't use steroids. Steroids can damage you. Steroids aren't part of my game plan. How about you? Jefferson Highlights Community Television. Uh, meeting with Nikki Russo here. Nice to meet you, Nikki. Thank you. And she's from the Girl Scouts. And maybe you can tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, how long have you been with the Girl Scouts? I've been with them for seven years. That's a long time. You yeah. must have started really young. Yeah, daisies. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, what do you enjoy most about being a Girl Scout? Like, helping out people and achieving things and looking forward to get badges and stuff. Now what do you do to earn badges? Maybe you can give me some examples of badges that you've earned. We have to go through like processes, like we have to do like steps, like for, for I'm working on my silver award right now. Okay. And we have to go through the book of pages, like to do steps. Okay. And is there um, a certain community type event? Can you give me an example of something either you're doing or you have done to, to earn that? Well, I've done the uh, soup kitchen, which is feeding the poor. 
and that's one of the community things we've done. Okay. And right now we're doing the um, pet shelter. We're cleaning it up and giving them blankets and stuff. Is that for the local Jefferson Pound? Uh, yeah, the Rainbow Pound. Wow, now yeah. I've, I've, I've been there, so yeah. I'm sure they probably can use, um, you know, yeah. volunteer helping. So basically a bunch of the Girl Scouts get together, go down there and, yeah. and try to help out. That's for my silver award. Wow, yeah. that's terrific. Um, what about any special honors? You were talking about the silver. What's special about the silver and is there anything past the silver? Well, there's the gold award, which is above the silver, and that's like the most you can get. Okay. But the silver, it's like good on your college records, and it's like a lot of community work. Okay, <laughs> excellent. And what would you like to tell other, other girls that might be watching the show today that maybe are interested in joining the Girl Scouts but never really thought about it? What, what would you like to say to them? Well, you go on a lot of trips, like we bridge down in Disney World in the uh, Magical Castle. Okay. And you um, help people and you hang out, you meet new friends and stuff. Okay. <laughs> so you've met a lot of Girl Scouts like from all over, not yeah. just New Jersey. So some of the trips you've gone on, they can be, they can be pretty much anywhere yeah. and other Girl Scouts come so you get to meet people from other you know, from other cultures yeah. or other states, so to speak. Uh -huh. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining me, and, and hopefully we'll get some more Girl Scouts, uh, you know, especially here in Jefferson. It sounds like it's growing really large. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And if you're interested in signing on to the Girl Scouts or, or looking up for more information, you can go to www.magsc.org, or you can call 973-927-927. 7722. Thanks for joining us on Jefferson Highlights Community Television. I'm Lori Zook.